As you might know by now, James Webb Space Telescope made quite a lot of groundbreaking discoveries in the first two years of its operation, and some of these discoveries in regards to the distant universe still don't really make a lot of sense. Mostly because some of these distant galaxies seem to have developed way too fast or appear to be a little bit more mature than the scientists anticipated. And though we've discussed some of the explanations for this in the videos in the description, with the overall summary being that these galaxies are still actually really small and contain a lot of really, really young stars, but just seem to develop much faster, naturally these initial observations resulted in quite a lot of somewhat controversial propositions from a lot of researchers out there, and that of course includes the ideas that the Big Bang never happened, or that the Big Bang happened many times and we're just looking at some of the ancient galaxies that existed before, or, as we're going to be discussing in this particular video, there was a study that for some reason went viral after a press release by University of Ottawa, where a single researcher released a bunch of papers basically claiming that the universe might be actually much older, approximately 26 billion years old, second of all, dark matter might not exist, and essentially tries to explain these observations from the James Webb by making the universe just a little bit bigger and a little bit older. And a lot of you wonderful people asked me to talk about this, mostly because I guess you wanted to have an explanation to all of this, but also because I guess it did go viral after all. So that means I have to cover it and possibly disprove it, right? Well, luckily, someone has already done this for me, and that someone is the wonderful Ethan Siegel, who writes incredible science communication articles, including one you can find in the description. And though his article is quite well written, and I encourage you to read this yourself, compared to my videos, I guess he takes it to a slightly different step, when he basically implies that a lot of these claims are based on the stupidity of the author. Although interestingly, this quote comes from the iconic Richard Feynman. And so yeah, do check out that article if you get a chance, because it does take a slightly different approach to explaining what I guess I'm going to be explaining today. But the main premise is pretty much the same. It's very easy for someone to basically take his own idea and try to fit a bunch of data from around the universe, I guess, to try to convince everyone that their idea is correct and possibly everyone else's is not. However, in this particular case, this idea from the author from University of Ottawa is based on a very intriguing premise that we know for a fact is not correct. So here's what he actually proposes and here's how he explains his 26.8 billion years old universe. So according to the author, the universe is still actually expanding and the Big Bang still very likely happened, but there are two other phenomena he introduces which leads to his conclusion of 26.8 billion years old universe. The first one is known as the tired light hypothesis. You can read more about this in one of the links in the description, but this is essentially a really old proposition from nearly a hundred years ago, by the iconic Fritz Zwicky, the scientist who discovered dark matter. This was actually before we knew the Big Bang was probably the best explanation, and so back then he tried to explain redshift, or the fact that some galaxies appear to be much redder than others, as maybe a result of the idea behind light just losing energy or basically getting tired for some unknown reason, and the more it travels across the universe, the more tired it gets and the more energy it loses. So in other words, if something starts, for example, as blue, as it travels billions of light years, it slowly transforms into yellow, then red, and then possibly becomes infrared. And so basically, instead of assuming Doppler shift, or technically a cosmological shift, the proposition here instead relies on the light itself just losing energy over time. Now, it was not known why or explained how it does this, but it was still an intriguing proposition. But even Zwicky himself had a lot of reservations about this proposition and eventually decided against it. Mostly because he also realized that a tired light is going to have certain effects on very distant objects. One of the first clues here was blurriness. Because as the light gets tired, it also becomes less sharp, and so the images from distant universe should technically appear very blurry. And I mean, maybe some do, but in this picture you can see that even distant galaxies are actually pretty sharp. Although I think one of the best examples is right here. This is based on the Ring Galaxies video you can find in the description. This is the Hoax object. And inside of this object you can see another Ring Galaxy. It's much, much farther away, but actually does not appear blurry at all. Both of these galaxies, at different distances, appear just as sharp, but the distant galaxy is very redshifted. Likewise, another explanation involves what's known as the Tolman surface brightness, 
And the way it works is really simple. So this is actually the case if the universe is not expanding and if it's really just a tired light. And so in the tired light universe, if we look at distant objects, we're actually going to see a huge concentration of them, but obviously with much redder colors. Instead though, we actually see something like this, which is one of the explanations for the expanding universe. But in more scientific terms, it actually relates to the idea behind how surface brightness changes in the expanding universe and it seems to directly correspond to what we actually observe. And so that's the second proposition that presents evidence against tired light. This idea was also proposed before the discovery of cosmic microwave background, and so naturally CMB also serves as another proof that tired light seems to make no sense. Basically, in observations of CMB, if the light was getting tired, we would actually see different observations and different temperatures compared to what we observed from the universe 13.8 billion years ago. Specifically, it would actually appear just a little bit hotter overall and would not resemble a black body radiation curve that we actually observe in the CMB. But that's just three out of six ideas that basically show us that tired light hypothesis is most likely incorrect. There are some other links in the description that provide even more evidence, such as for example the fact that we also observe time dilation in various quasars, suggesting that they are actually redshifted and the universe is expanding, as opposed to this being tired light. But that's beside the point. The point is that in the last hundred years, and especially because of observations from the Hubble telescope in the 90s, tired light hypothesis has been officially put to rest. It does not seem to be correct. The light does not seem to get tired as it travels across the universe, and the redshift we're observing seems to be entirely the result of the expanding universe and not some kind of an energy drain from photons. But that's unfortunately the main premise behind this study that seems to argue for it, without actually providing any definitive proofs. Although to be more exact, it's a kind of a hybrid model. It suggests that both the universe expansion and the tired light seem to kind of coexist and then tries to fit the data from the James Webb to sort of fit these ideas together. But that's actually not really scientific because that's basically cherry picking data in order to fit an idea, especially because no evidence for tired light exists anywhere. Moreover, in that study, the researcher goes a step further. He also suggests that over time, the constants must have changed as well, but they all kind of did it together so because of this we don't see anything unusual. And so basically he introduces what he refers to as covariant coupling constants. Various physical constants, such as the cosmological constant, that change with time, making the universe appear younger. But in reality it's much older, approximately 26.7 billion years old. Once again, absolutely no evidence for any of this, but it fits the data that he's trying to present. Or basically it fits this graph right here and also a bunch of other graphs. But unfortunately, that's the problem right there. First of all, a lot of these James Webb galaxies that he uses have already been reanalyzed, and for many of them, the distances have been corrected because the initial redshifts were unfortunately incorrect. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. Second of all, using unproven or even disproven ideas to try to fit the data without any evidence to suggest that it's correct is unfortunately not really good science. Here, because the researcher is clearly looking for data points to try to fit into his graphs, that's basically just cherry picking. And if we consider his proposition of constants changing over time, there's also an issue with that as well. So for example, in the standard model of physics, we actually require 19 constants in various equations. And a lot of these constants are normally also associated with electrons. That actually includes the Planck constant and the constant for the speed of light. And here on Earth, several major tests have been conducted in the past, usually using atomic clocks, but also using various sediments from across the planet. A typical atomic clock depends on electromagnetic interaction and directly depends on the mass of electron. And they're also ridiculously accurate. A modern atomic clock only loses like one second every 20 to 40 billion years. And over time, what the scientists discovered is that if you were to put a bunch of atomic clocks around the planet and basically run them for a long time, if the constants would change even a little bit, we would start noticing the difference pretty quickly. That's essentially how accurate these clocks are. But after years and even decades of operation, so far, nothing. The constants indeed seem to be kind of constant. Okay, well that's like a decade or so, right? Maybe they just take longer to change, or maybe they, for some reason, stop changing. Okay, well how about a billion years? How about three and a half billion years? 
We actually also had a lot of different experiments using uranium from across the planet that's usually 3 to 4 billion years old. And because technically these are natural nuclear reactors, they also rely on a lot of fundamental constants when these nuclear reactions occur. And so if the constants did change over time, we would actually observe very different nuclear reactions 3 to 4 billion years ago. Or basically uranium from 3 to 4 billion years ago would appear a little bit different. Yet they really don't. They do suggest that the reactions 3 to 4 billion years ago were exactly the same as nuclear reactions today. The constants, once again, did not change. With the other explanation usually involving really, really distant galaxies such as quasars from even farther back in time, sometimes up to 10 to 12 billion years ago, in the very distant universe. And the thing is, the light from these quasars usually passes through a lot of gas. And as it passes through the gas, it produces an absorption spectrum. And that also depends on constants and specifically interaction of electrons. Which means that the quasar light we observe from everywhere, and as you might have learned from one of the recent videos, millions have been discovered around us, would also appear different depending on the era you're looking at. Yet it doesn't. All of the spectra appear pretty much the same, and none of the quasar light appears unique or anomalous. And that's just three separate explanations for why we actually believe constants most likely did not change for at least 10 to 12 billion years. Before that, there is no evidence, but it's assumed that they haven't changed before that either. But anyway, the point is that the two main foundations for this study that tries to explain the universe as 26.8 billion years old seem to be based on completely erroneous assumptions. Which by itself makes the study, I guess, another viral study that everyone is going to be talking about for a little bit until the next one comes out with even more extraordinary explanations or propositions. And that's basically the nature of modern science communication. And so anyway, on that note, the point is that that particular study is most likely incorrect, even though based on observations from the James Webb, we know there are still some shortcomings in our explanations regarding galactic evolution, but not in regards to the idea of the expansion of the universe, which is based on decades and decades of really good data, and ideas of cosmological constants with hundreds of different experiments in just the last few years, basically proving that they are constant after all. And so yeah, I guess I'm just going to stop it at that, and you can read a few more explanations from that article by Ethan Siegel in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.